the wrong man, Bob. That's Adam Cartwright. Come on, let's get out of here. A friend. A friend? Are you sure a feather-footed one? Who are you? Gerald Eskiff, by name. Here. Perhaps this will relieve your mind. U.S. Deputy Marshal. I can't say I'm sorry to see you. Who are they? The Clevenger brothers. Friends of yours? Hardly that. But you may have made a terrible mistake. Just be thankful that you're still alive. And I'll be thankful that I've reached the end of a long trail. The Clevengers were wanted in California for bank robbery. I had the uh, unpleasant duty of killing their older brother. He was caught robbing sluice boxes. Oh, so you were the one. I was only performing my official duty. Welcome to the Potteros. From what Adam tells me, we're greatly in your debt. Well, I'm happy that I was fortunate enough to be in the right place at the right time. I will try to make your stay a very comfortable one. Please. Thank you. I appreciate a great deal what you did for Adam. All of us. Adam? Anything else you want to tell me? Oh, I still can't believe it, Pa. I mean, I'm not selling the Clevengers short. The roughest bunch of renegades I've ever known, but I just can't imagine them taking a shot at me. Well, you never know with that bunch. Old Git Clevenger and his boys have made their own laws for so long, you never know when they might step over the line. And you did have the ranch payroll with you. They must have thought it was somebody else. Now, believe me, Adam, I know how you feel, but the Marshal did have a warrant for them. Well, there's one thing for certain, he isn't too upset about it. Now, come on, we've got a guest to take care of. We'll decide later what to tell you, Clevenger. If he gives us a chance to talk. Mm. The bucolic life is not for Gerald Eskin. Why well, put Mr. Eskin's bag in the upstairs room? Thanks, son. Well, one would scarcely expect to encounter the Epe out here in the wilderness. Well, little Joe's mother was Louisiana French. He likes to play around with them. You mean you actually use this? Oh, I fool around with it just for fun. He's faster than Grease Lightning, Mr. Eskin. Come on, Joe, let's show him. On guard, brother. You should never have given those two a chance to show off. Oh! <laughs> you know, they really have no intention of killing each other. He has an admirable skill. Whack him over the head, horse. You'll never get anywhere poking at him. <laughs> Touche. Nevertheless, your technique is not quite flawless. When you faint to the left, you're a bit off balance. On guard? On guard. Somebody with that. 
Lost the button off the point. So I did. This might have been fatal. Violence as such is vulgar. Any man who in anger takes a human life becomes a brother of the apes. He's an aesthetically impoverished man. Don't you think so? Oh, yes, sir. I reckon. And yet the skills and rhythms of disciplined violence have beauty. Like a painting by Rubens or Botticelli. Unfettered by personal emotion. Yes. There, to that simple word, can be traced the downfall of most artists and many human creatures. Emotion. Yeah, that's a, a very interesting observation, Mr. Eskett. I don't think I could cast you in the mold of an average lawman. <laughs> I've been told that. Well, I think the elegance and hospitality of your home have made me forget my original mission. I'm here to visit an old friend. Would you happen to know a Mr. Jason Blaine? What, do you say? Yes. Oh, yes, know him, know him very well. And his wife. Wife? Jason married? Oh, yes, about a year. They were married right in this very room. Then you do know him well. Well, uh, Jason has always been a little hard to know, but uh, Mariette is practically a part of our family. Mariette? What a charming name. Yes, uh, her father was a very dear friend of mine. When he died, he left the raising of Mariette almost entirely to my supervision. Jason Blaine married. How very, very interesting. Is she a pretty girl? Well, we always thought so, but of course we could be slightly prejudiced. Oh, no, my dear Adam. I have a feeling I can trust your judgment in such matters. Time to eat, please. Oh, good. Could I uh, freshen up a bit before supper? Oh, of course. I'll show you to your room. Adam, what are you staring at? Oh, I didn't realize I was. I know you feel bad about the Clevengers, but it's like Eskett told Hoss and me. Bob and Bill had a bead right on your back. He had to shoot fast in any way he could. You had to just be thankful he was there. Yeah, I'll try to remember that. Come on, let's have some supper. Right. And so, under the circumstances, there was little I could do. And that, gentlemen, is the way I shot my first tiger in India. Oh! Hey. Oh, for heaven's sakes, number one, because can't you do anything right? Here, let me do that. Mr. Cartwright, take you long time to know San Francisco. Take me long time to know Pantalosa. I help you in San Francisco, you help me in Pantalosa. All right? All right. Thank you. You know, for years we had the most wonderful cook, Hop Singh. So he went back to Hong Kong and talked me into hiring his number one cousin. I don't know. <laughs> number one cousin? Doesn't he have a name? If he's got one, he hasn't told us about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about this, Gerald. Think nothing of it. The same thing happened when I was dining with the Prince of Wales in Paris. Dad, go, Mr. Eskett. You ain't been just about every place. And there's one place I never cease to enjoy going to. Where's that? Bed. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a long ride, and I'm afraid I'm not much of a night owl. Gerald, this has been an extremely pleasant evening. Extremely pleasant. I'm sorry about what happened at the end of it. Uh, Hoss and Joe, see that Mr. Eskett has everything he needs? Yes, sir. Uh, tomorrow morning, Adam and I will ride into Virginia City with you. We'll show you where Jason and Marianne live. Fine, fine. Have a good rest. Adam, I regret the circumstances under which we met, but I'm grateful that we, we did meet. A stranger in a strange community. It's heartening to have substantial friends. Good night. Good night. Mr. Eskett, did you sure enough have that old tiger cat for the tail? Sure enough. <laughs> that house makes the most wonderful audience, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I hope you'll go along with my little whimsy and wanting to surprise Jason. We were such close friends, and it's been such a long time since I've seen him. Are you sure you could find the house? My dear Adam. Your directions are most explicit. Now, don't forget, we want you to spend at least a few days with us at the ranch house. I know Adam and the boys will want to take you on that cougar hunt. Ben, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your hospitality. 
And as I told you before, there's nothing in life I find as exciting as a hunt. Thank you again, both of you. Adam, when you get through with the bank, meet me at the hotel. We'll have a bite to eat. All right. Pardon me, dear lady, if I startled you. But I had wrongly assumed that no one was home and it started to leave. I'm glad that I was in error. You're Mrs. Blaine? Yes, I am. The Cartwrights told me all about you. Are you a friend of the Cartwrights? And an old and dear friend of your good husband. Gerald Eskis is my name. Surely, Jason has mentioned me. No, I don't recall. Well, that is, I've never met any of Jason's friends. Did you meet him in California? I did indeed. My dear child, Jason's mineralogy has surely been worthwhile. He's found a true jewel. I don't know if you're making fun of me or not, but Jason is not at home. Then perhaps you wouldn't mind if I waited a while for him. Ben and Adam have some business to transact in town, and I'm a total stranger here. Yes, of course. How rude of me. Won't you come in, Mr. Eskis? Thank you. Oh, won't you sit down, Mr. Eskis? Thank you. I'll make you some tea. How very thoughtful of you. What a fine likeness of Jason. Yes, it is, isn't it? Jason, good morning. How are you, Adam? Fine. Did your friend find you? Oh, who's that? Your friend from California, Gerald Eskett. No. Is there anything wrong? Uh, no, everything's all right. Eskett, uh, did you hear in town? Well, he stopped over at our ranch last night, and he rode into town this morning with us. Went to your house. He wanted to surprise you. Thank, thank you, Adam. has some very interesting things, Marianne. I couldn't help but notice this jewel box. Oh, Jason took that for a saying some ore. I'm afraid he isn't very practical. But he is sweet. We've been so happy here. I'm sure you have. We thought most highly of Jason in San Francisco. Oh, how elegant these must look on you. Oh, they're not real pearls. But your beauty would make them appear priceless. Please, may I see them on you? Oh, Jason, darling, there you are. Look who's here. My dear Jason, after all of these years, Ask it. They're reviving the old case in Sacramento, Jason. And they couldn't very well proceed without the chief prosecution witness, you. Is this something you two gentlemen would rather discuss privately? No, no, not at all. My business as a law enforcement officer is public business, and I'm sure that you and your husband have no secrets from each other. I'll fix you some tea, Jason. <laughs> She's almost part of the Cartwright family. How much have you told her? Nothing. I detest emotional display. What's the matter, Jason? 
Nothing, Marriott. Nothing you'd understand. You're not aware of all the facts, Marriott. He has a right to be a reluctant witness. His testimony will be against the most sinister forces in Northern California. They may seek retaliation. Retaliation? However, he'll be in my protective custody. Jason, I trust you to be ready for the journey, shall we say, at noon tomorrow? Does that allow you enough time? You trust me? I amend that. I trust your wife to see that you're ready. Thank you for the tea, Marriott. It was indeed a pleasure meeting you. I should never have tried to run away from it. Jason, what do you mean? I loved you so much. I thought I had a right to a little happiness. But you did have, and you still have. I won't let you go back. We can leave, and we can make another start. Don't you see that that's what I tried to do, and this is the result of it? Nothing will change. I've got to go back with him. But he said that it would be dangerous. I don't intend to lose you, Jason. I love you much too much. Oh, have you seen Esket? Oh, he's probably still with Jason. Did you get that matter straightened out at the bank? Oh, yeah. Good. But uh, as I was leaving, I ran into Jason, and I told him that uh, Esket was looking for him, and he uh, he seemed very upset about it. Oh? Huh? I think Esket is here as a friend to see Jason, or uh, is he here in an official capacity? Well, I don't know. Esket is a United States Deputy Marshal. Of course, what do we really know about Jason? Came in here, swept Marriott off her feet. Of course, he's done very well here. He's been here. He's been very good to her. I suppose that's all you could ask of any man. Yeah, well, I'd feel better if I had a talk with Marriott and Jason. Just ask them if there was anything wrong. What do you think? I think it's a good idea. And also remind Marriott that we still have family for as long as she needs us. Look, while you're over there, I'll go see Judge Rand. <laughs> Someplace, my dear Jason? I was young, Esketh. It was over five years ago. Time gets away from a man, doesn't it? I'm curious, Jason. Why didn't you go back to Ohio? My arm isn't quite that long. You know I'm a mineralogist. Yes. I traced you through Arizona, Idaho, and all over the Comstock Lode. You changed your name a couple of times. But I found you. Well, you can't take me out of Nevada territory. Here are the extradition papers. I trust, Jason, you're growing tired of trying to run away. Everything legal and above board, huh, Esket? Always. Which reminds me, I must present my credentials to your local judge. I had a little official business on the way in. Billy and Bob Clevenger. You saw the Clevengers? Briefly, through my sights. They're both dead. What about Gideon, the old man? Always a good friend to you, wasn't he, Jason? No, I haven't seen him yet, but I'll plan to see him before he sees me. You, um... Seem to have built up a nice little business here. Oh, why don't you get it over with? Why don't you kill me and have done with it? No, Jason. I'll kill you because that's what I came here for. But I'll pick my own time and my own place. And besides, I intend to get much better acquainted with your wife. She's lovely, Jason, completely lovely. <laughs> What's the 
the matter? Is there something wrong? Oh, no, nothing. It's just that I haven't seen you for so long. Where's Jason? Oh, he went to the office to uh, pick up some things. Mariette, you're just about as close to being a sister as I'll ever have. Now, a big part of that pleasure is being able to help you. Tell me, what happened when Gerald Esketh came here? Oh, nothing happened. I think Mr. Esketh is a very charming person. We, uh, we even had tea. Oh, Adam, I just can't lie to you. I've tried, but I just can't. That's more like it. Now, tell me about it. Jason has to go to California to be a witness in a trial. Well, that doesn't sound so terrible. I know, but the men that he has to testify against, they threatened to kill him. You see, that's why Jason left California. I see. Did he talk to Judge Rand about this? Oh, that was my first suggestion, but Jason didn't think it would do any good. Well, Jason's upset. I think I'm in a better position to decide than he is. So why don't you and I have a talk with Judge Rand? I think we'll find that Jason can make a legal deposition right here in Virginia City. Oh, Adam, could we do something like that? Well, we won't know until we ask, will we? Come on, get your hat. All right. I'm sure when we know all the facts... Adam. My dear Mariette. What a pleasant surprise this is. Forgive me, Your Honor. I am United States Deputy Marshal Gerald Eskin. You're in my federal district, Marshal. If you have business here, you should have presented your documents to me. I fully intended to do so, sir. As a matter of fact, I was on my way to your chambers when your uh, messenger intercepted me. Mrs. Blaine states that her husband's life will be in danger if he, if he gives certain testimony in Sacramento. To some extent, she may be right. I myself will not feel too secure as his pledged bodyguard. Now, you will note there, sir, that this is the state versus Hadley Murdoch and a number of John Doe's, all of whom comprise a political machine known as the Murdoch Gang. Now, these are infamous men, sir, grown fat on terrorism and plunder, and so rich and powerful indeed that they now have most of the state of California under their rule of dread and fear. Blaine is the key witness? We, on the side of the law, earnestly believe that Jason Blaine is the one man who can send these culprits to the gallows. Well, your husband's duty is clear, Mariette. And we can't very well call out the militia to guard him. Well, I was planning a trip to Sacramento in a week or so. I could change my plans, go along with you. It would make Mariette feel better. Oh, it would, Adam, it would. Anything to relieve this dear lady's anxieties. And rest assured, we'll be joined by other officers in Sacramento. Oh, I'm very grateful to you, to all of you. Uh, Mr. Esketh, I'm terribly sorry to have caused you all this trouble. There's no trouble, my dear. On the contrary. I was delighted to see revealed that jewel which money cannot buy, loyalty. Marshal, you and Adam both, I, I'd like to talk to you. If it's, uh, if it's all right with you, Mariette. Of course not. Adam, Jason will be so pleased to know that you're going with him. Thank you, gentlemen, thank you. It's about the killing of the Clevenger brothers. Ah, yes. Uh, distasteful duty, I assure you. But there is a warrant out in California for their arrest. I was talking to your father, Adam. He was telling me that Gideon Clevenger came to see him. Yeah, but he didn't seem to want to make any trouble. Strange man, Gideon Clevenger. He'll brood about the death of his sons. Then he'll decide to take the law into his own hands. Be very dangerous if he makes up his mind to it. 
Well, the thought of any further bloodshed is completely repelling to me. I'll rest a whole lot easier when you're out of town, on your way back to Sacramento. Then you think that this um, Gideon Clevenger will make the death of his two sons a personal issue between himself and me? I think that precisely. I have the most wonderful news. I've just come from talking to Judge Rand. You what? Oh, it's all right, darling. He's going to write a letter to a friend in Sacramento, a judge. And then Adam is going to go with you. No, no, he can't do that. But Jason, Adam only wants to help. Well, he, well, he can't go with me. But why? Tell me why. Because if Adam Cartwright goes with me, he'll never get there alive. <laughs> Jason, what are you trying to tell me? Can't we make one move in our life without the Cartwrights getting mixed up in it? But the Cartwrights are my best friends and are the best friends you ever had. I don't want to talk about it. Jason, now come on, this isn't like us. I'm your wife and I have a right to know the truth. Well, I have told you the truth. Tell me something. Why did you say that if Adam went with you, he would be killed? Because that is the truth, too. Jason, I have never asked you anything about your past life before because it just wasn't important. But now it is. Now, do they want you as a witness for something you saw or for something you did? What difference does it make? Eskis told you about the Murdoch gang, didn't he? Yes. Well, that gang isn't going to let me get the Sacramento alive. Not even with Mr. Eskis and Adam to protect you? Don't you realize that Eskis was sent here to kill me? Once I leave here, I'll be dead before I can get as far as the Ponderosa. But why would anybody want to kill you? Because that's why he came here. He is a hired, paid killer. Now try to understand that. But Jason, there must be something we can do. There must be. You want me to get a gun? Go up against him? <laughs> he would love that. Self-defense, everything above board, legal. Then why don't you go to Judge Rand? Tell him the truth and he'll protect you. You saw his papers. He is a marshal. He has every right in the world to take me in. And you're going to stand there and let him do it. Well, what else can I do? We can go away. We can go east. Jason, please, please, they can't reach that far. Even if we have to spend the rest of our lives hiding, I don't care. I'd much rather have you that way than not have you at all. Please. Oh, if we only could. If we only could. It would be like starting from the beginning. No West. No past tense. Jason, we must do it. We must. We can. I know we can. You get some things packed. There's still Eskit. Don't forget, I tried this once before. Oh, but don't forget, you didn't have me before. Now, I can handle him. I think I know a ladies' man when I see one. Yes, I know how to deal with him. No, I can't let you do that. He's too dangerous. Oh, no, darling. Really, he won't be with me. Please trust me. Trust me. Now, hurry. Hurry and get something packed, please. Adam, I find this a land of unexpected pleasures. Little did I dream that you'd be making the trip to Sacramento with me. Well, since I am, don't you think it uh, might be a good idea to let me in on the truth? Well, isn't that a rather strange way to put a question, Adam? Well, as Pa and I both told you, we think a great deal of Mariette. And so do I think a lot of her. That's why I tried to spare her the seriousness of Jason's case. Then he's not just a missing witness. A missing criminal. But on your honor, Adam, this is to go no further in Virginia City. By turning state's evidence, he'll be able to return here with no damage to his so-called reputation. Well, I appreciate whatever protection you can give Mariette. You know, I believe we think alike. I even had him listed in the documents as a witness, not as one of the accused. Thank you for telling me. I'd like to get the best lawyer you can find. Adam, I don't want you to think it rude of me. 
But under the circumstances, I think it's best not to return to the Ponderosa. I'll take a room here at the hotel, and if it's convenient for you, we'll leave, shall we say, first thing in the morning? It's fine with me. I'll bring your luggage in with me. And bring along your best suit, Adam. I know some pretty girls in Sacramento, and perhaps we can forget some of the more unpleasant aspects of a marshal's duties. Very good. If I uh, seemed a little cool towards you, it was only because of my concern for Mariette. Well, I uh, better let Pa know what's happened. See you in the morning. Maybe we can reason with him. No, Ben. Let me try it. Hello, Gideon. We haven't seen you for some time. Save your words, Judge. I know Gerald Escott's in this town. Now, where is he? I really don't know, Gideon. Look at me when I talk to you. I don't like fellers who can't look straight. You've lost three sons trying to fight a private war. Why don't you just find yourself a rocking chair? And live to a ripe old age, huh? I've got a better idea that'll help a lot more people. You deliver Escott to me, I'll get out of Virginia City and stay out. You don't? I got 20 more men anxious to ride in here. You're not serious. I have offered you a fair deal. Get me that back shooter. Come in. Oh, my dear Adam. They tell me Gideon Clevenger's looking for me. He's threatened to tear the whole town apart unless you're handed over to him. He seems a truly dedicated scoundrel. Faithful to his purpose, honest to a fault. I want you to know that Pa and I'll be backing you up. Thank you kindly, Adam. Shall we uh, look into the matter? Well, you're certainly a cool one. I'll have to admit that. Make our friend a sporting proposition. He's in the saloon. Clevenger! Can you hear me? I can hear you, Esketh. It's a voice I'm not likely to forget. You made this personal, Clevenger, so let's keep it that way. There's no sense in harming innocent people. You've made yourself a deal. But if the Cartwrights or anyone else tries to get into it, I'm cutting my boys loose. You're free to change your mind any time. Thank you, friend, but I find the arrangement most satisfactory. I've already planned my strategy. I don't like this, Adam. I'm beginning to think Esketh knows what he's doing. Make your play, you filthy little backshooter. 
You first, my dear Clevenger. Finish the job, Eskut. Adam, you better get the doctor to see what we can do for Clevenger. dropping in without knocking. Well, I was sure the door was locked. You grow lovelier each time I see you. I must look a sight. A sight indeed. The very kind and inspired Wordsworth to rhapsodize. She was a phantom of delight when first she gleamed upon my sight. Oh, now you know that you much prefer those sophisticated San Francisco women to a country girl like myself. I hope someday to prove the error of that statement by putting you beside them. A ruby in a diadem of glass. Oh, you mean the ones from the Barbary Coast? What lies has Jason been telling you about me? Oh, why, none, none. It's just that I know so little about San Francisco. It was only a chance remark. Then please accept my apology. I'm thin-skinned when it comes to matters of honor. Oh, I apologize, too. I had planned to look much more presentable the next time we met. Then it was rude of me to arrive so unexpectedly. But I thought I'd better tell you. The Judge Rand suggested that I start back to Sacramento immediately. Oh, so soon. You don't know how lonely it gets. I mean, Jason has to work such long hours. I've never met anyone like you, Gerald. A little more time won't matter. Could you come to the hotel to let me know when Jason is ready? Just as long as you aren't too impatient. Now, let us not misunderstand my honorable intentions. I understand your intentions perfectly. <laughs> You're going to learn just who you've been playing games with. Who? What are you? He's Murdoch's hatchet man. Around the Embarcadero, they call him the dude butcher boy. It's my reckoning he came here to lead Jason Blaine to the slaughter because Jason knows too much. Jason was mixed up with Murdoch? He was a spotter for the bunch. That's easy for an essayer. Whenever he'd see gold bullion, he'd tell Eskut. That slimy killer would lead his night riders, claiming they were vigilantes. That was a good cover for him. But Jason got sickened. He quit and ran away. Jason was too soft for Eskut's shooting parties. I saw him later in Virginia City. But I figured let a feller go straight that's trying hard. And your oldest son? Eskith back shot my boy at our California stamp mill. 
Well, his outfit looted. The other two, you know about men. They wasn't killers. They heard Esketh was headed this way. They mistook Adam for him. That fool, Jason. Why couldn't he tell us the trouble he was in? There's a thing called reputation, Ben. Especially if you're married to a woman like Mariette. I'd swear she never knew that Jason had a record. Where's Jason? Was Esketh here? Yes. He hit me. And he slapped me. And he wanted me to tell. Did he tell you who he really is? Yes. And he said terrible things about Jason. Where is Jason? Where is he? Where is he? The uh, silver Corazon mine. I'm supposed to meet him there. He gave me a little trail map. He took it. It's gone. He took it. He took the map. Oh, He'll kill come, Jason. Come, come down. Kill. Now listen, I'll send somebody to look after you. Now don't go away. You stay right here. Okay. Jason. Jason. You can't get away, Jason. Can you hear me? Would you like to hear what happened to your wife? She died in my arms, Jason. I held her. I watched her. Can you take that and run away with it? The unruly emotions, Jason. But don't be ashamed because they've destroyed you. They've conquered more men than Napoleon's army. Go ahead. Go ahead and shoot. The sound will bring right to you. I'm here!
Mason? Mary. She's all right. I'm taking you in, Eskip. It's hot in here, isn't it? Or is it just the uncomfortable circumstances I find myself in? No. It might have worked on Clevenger, but it won't work on me. My dear Adam, you don't think that I'd be childish, so childish as to pull the same chestnut twice. <laughs> I wish you hadn't tried it, Eskip. I suppose I... I knew all along that this would happen. Someday. Thank you for your... hospitality, Mary. I never dreamed that Gerald Eskip would be defeated by emotions. I can't believe you ever had any. Oh, yes. I did. I was in love, you know. I was in love with Gerald Eskin. We'll miss you very much. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for everything. Judge Rand said it shouldn't be more than a year. And that will be the longest year of my life. Well, I'm glad you made the decision on your own, Jason. When you come back, your house will be here waiting. Thank you, Ben. Goodbye. We'll be waiting, too. Things will be just the same. Thank you, Ed.